I've seen quite a few people have added air assist to their K40 laser cutters using either an aquarium air pump or a radial fan. The reasons seem to vary, with some saying that the fan blows the smoke away and improves engraving clarity, and some saying that you get better cutting results. I've also seen people say that you have less chance of your material catching on fire. I thought I'd try one of the air assist solutions out and see what the results are. I chose to go with the radial fan option, as a fan is only a couple of dollars, which is much cheaper than the aquarium compressor. I started out by measuring the head of the laser cutter in order to design a 3D printer bracket to hold the fan and a duct to direct the flow towards the cutting area. I designed the duct away from the lens rather than around the lens as it didn't seem like a good idea to direct dirty air from inside the cutting chamber towards the lens. At the same time, I designed an arm to support a red dot laser pointer. I've included print files for the model with and without the pointer. Have a look at my other video for the red dot pointer modification. I printed out the bracket using black PLA with a 50% infill. There are three included models, one for the pointer only, one for the fan assist only, and one for the pointer and fan assist, so you can print out the one you need. I ordered one of these 24 volt radial fans, which are said to be designed as laptop cooling fans, as these can be powered straight from the existing 24 volt supply. Push the fan into the top of the ducting. It should be a fairly snug fit, and you can add a bead of hot glue around the edges to seal it up. An M3x15 hex head screw and nut is used to clamp the bracket onto the head of the laser. Slide the bracket onto the bottom of your head of your laser and then secure it by tightening the screw. Now that the fan is in place, we need to add the power connection and a push button to turn it on. I'm going to be doing this next step in conjunction with the red dot pointer addition, but the method is exactly the same. You'll need to add a drag chain to support the power cables to the head of the laser, so that they don't get caught up when the laser is moving. The one end of the drag chain gets connected to the head of the laser, and the other end to the side wall of the machine. First we'll need to add an anchor screw onto the head of the laser. I took the head off for this step as it's easier to work with. I drilled a 4mm hole on one side of the head and added an M4 screw which was long enough to fit through the drag chain and then replaced the head. Place the end of the drag chain onto the laser cutter head and then measure out the length of drag chain you need. You want it to be long enough to reach all four corners of your bed but not too long that it gets in the way. Remove the spare links so that it's the correct length and then add the end support. Mark off the two holes for the end support so that you can drill the required holes through the wall of the machine. I used a 4mm drill bit to drill two holes for some M4 by 15mm screws, which are then secured through the sidewall. You might also want to add a thin screw or rod onto the head to stop the drag chain from being able to move into the path of the laser. This will interrupt the laser's path causing your cut to fail and potentially damage the drag chain or cause it to catch on fire. Next I added some push buttons to the control panel. I added four buttons, one for the pointer and one for the fan assist. I also included another two which I plan on using for a future height adjustable print bed. I wasn't too worried about keeping them neat, as I'm planning on replacing the front panel, as the LCD display is not very useful, and the more basic ammeter panel is actually better. You'll then need to get to work on the wiring. You need three wires for the head, one for the 24 volts for the fan, 
one for five volts with a pointer, and one for common ground. If you're not using the fan or not using the pointer, then you'll only need two wires. Feed the wires through the side of your machine and into the electronics compartment. I ran them in the existing cable bundle so that the wiring is kept neat. I ran the wires up to the push buttons and then down to the power supply for power. You'll need to hook your wires up to these three terminals on the power supply, depending on what you're supplying. Keep in mind that this power supply is not really designed with much extra capacity, so don't add anything which will draw a lot of power or you might burn it out. Now that all the wiring's done, let's turn on the fan and try it out. There's actually an impressive amount of airflow from such a small fan. I tested the air assist using a piece of 3mm MDF. I designed a small logo engraving and a rectangular cutout around it. I'll engrave and cut the two side by side so that you can see the difference. I did the engraving on 15% power at 100mm per second and the cutting at 35% power at 20mm per second. This won't cut all the way through the MDF, but I can then see if either cut went deeper. This is the result and it wasn't what I was expecting. The engraving is actually more dirty with the air assist on. It seems like instead of allowing the smoke to rise up and away from the wood, it's being blown back down onto the wood, causing more significant marks. The cutting was improved with the air assist on. The cut was just under halfway through the MDF without the air assist and was a little more than two thirds of the way through with the air assist on. So I'll most likely be removing the fan air assist as I tend to engrave with masking tape in any case as it produces a much cleaner result and you still need two passes to cut through the MDF with or without the air assist. I might look at trying out an air assist solution using a workshop compressor in future and see if more airflow leads to a better quality engraving. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.